So what is the maximum debt to income ratio that um, you should have if you're getting ready to buy a house? So it's a great question. So the question is on debt to income ratio. If it helps people out there, if I can give like another analogy, I always give the, the analogy of like the high jump in the Olympics. I always say like, like in the Olympics, they set a bar in the high jump and the goal is to go over the bar. In my industry, we set a bar, it's called debt to income ratio and the goal is to go under the bar. Generally speaking, well, let's talk about conventional loans. Generally speaking for a conventional loan, your house payment generally should not exceed 28% of your gross monthly income. So gross monthly income, Sophie, is it's the income before taxes come out. So if you say, Hesh, I make $36,000 a year, that's $3,000 a month before taxes. So your gross income is $3,000. If I take 28% of $3,000, which mathematically is, my goodness, it's about $900, give or take a little bit. You don't want your house payment to go over that dollar figure. Mm -hmm. So that's a level for debt to income ratio. For an FHA loan, the house payment generally should not exceed 31%. Mm -hmm. For a VA loan, they don't really have one for the house. Generally, you want to keep it around 30 to 40%. For USDA, it's 29%. So generally 30% for a house. Mm -hmm. For your total debt, generally conventional loans are 36%. That's the traditional conventional for the total debt. That means mm -hmm. All of your existing payments plus your new house payment generally should not exceed 36. FHA, it's 43. VA, generally, it's 41. USDA is 41. So you'll see they're in the high 30s, low 40s. Mm -hmm. Now, you could stretch those up, but generally, you want to stay within those ranges. When you start pushing the debt ratio higher, I hope your score is higher. You have more money down. Mm -hmm. You've got you to mitigate that risk of the higher debt ratio then. Thank you.